Hi everybody, it's Preston from Preston's Eight Legs. Before I start today's video, I just want to give a little explanation as to why I've been missing for the past two weeks. So I, besides my tarantulas that I have, I have a cat. Her name is Cutie. And she is 18 and a couple months old. Her, her birthday is April 1st, so she's an April Fool baby. But uh, recently she had a health scare and just been dealing with that, making sure she's okay and just getting her back to being healthy again. So just had to take care of that and then unfortunately miss a couple of videos. But I am back and I do have a topic that I think is pretty interesting to go over today and I think you guys will like it. Um, before I do that, I just want to show you this is Cutie. So you guys have seen the tarantulas, but this is my cat Cutie. This is her when she was probably like a year old. But um, she's older now and not so young and spry looking, but she's still cute to me. So, But I just did want to introduce you guys to Cutie. I would put, show her on camera, but she's a little shy and doesn't really like to be manhandled or anything so she just kind of likes to be by herself which is fine so today's video i want to go over the difference between a tarantula and a spider and a true spider so to start off with every tarantula is a spider but not every spider is a tarantula so what that means is that really with arachnids when it comes to like the spider species there's two different kinds there's a tarantula and then we split the other ones and call them true spiders and the main difference between tarantulas and true spiders is, is one the size and then some other physical features as well so i will show you guys here this is cinnamon as you guys have met before and this of course is a tarantula this is my rocky palma amelia and excuse the little poop stains there that I just clean it and this tarantula for some reason has a ton of poop all the time but you know I clean it and it gets it gets its job done so but this is a tarantula obviously and this is like you can tell by one by the size and two by the hair now true spiders will have hair like these guys but not all true spiders have to have hair but all tarantulas will be hairy, just like this just like this girl right here. You can see all the hairs, and all my other tarantulas have hair as well. Now, I can show you guys my spider, my actual true spider that I have. And you won't be able to see her too well, because she's kind of up here in her little web enclosure, which is fine. But let me bring this up here. So that is Jacqueline, and she is my Phidippus regius jumping spider. And she is a true spider, and how that's determined is basically one, because of her size, and two, because of her other physical features. One, she has not as much hair as a tarantula. She is hairy, but she's not as hairy as a tarantula. And then two, her chalice array and fangs are positioned differently than what a tarantula's would be. And I have this book right here that I'll show you guys here in just a moment to kind of show more in detail about how tarantulas and true spiders are more differentiated. Okay guys, so here's the book I was talking about. And here it shows a very good diagram of exactly what one of the differentiating things between a tarantula and a spider is. So what I was talking about with the chalice array, and the chalice array are the, what a lot of people think are just the fangs, but the fangs are made up of two parts, the actual fang, which is that right there, and then the chalice array, which is like their gums for their fangs, their gums for their teeth. But So the difference between a true spider and a tarantula is a tarantula's chalice array will be at the front of their face and they'll go down parallel just like that and stab into their prey. A true spider's chalice array and fangs will be positioned parallel to each other, but they'll be facing each other so that instead of going down into the prey like this, they'll actually go in and squeeze the prey like this. So they actually pinch it more than they stab it. Now, the reason why tarantulas and true spiders have a different thing is because of the size mainly and because that tarantulas are bigger, they're bigger body, they're stronger, they're a lot more, there's not as much of a size difference with them and their prey as there is true spiders and their prey. 
a tarantula can attack a roach that's smaller than it or the same size as it and stab into it and use its body force to control the prey and not let it get away and as it releases its venom into the prey item and start eating it. A true spider may be catching a piece of prey that may be its same size or even a little bit bigger. So what they had to do is they had to rely on their pincers, I call it a pincer, <laughs> their chalice and their fangs to actually pince their prey and actually lock it in there. That way that can actually hold a prey item instead of their body because they're so much smaller and not as big bodied and strong. They rely on their fangs and their venom to subdue the prey more than the tarantula does with a more physical force. And then here, this is also another good diagram here, how another tarantulas and true spiders differentiate with each other as well, is with the spinnerets. A lot of times tarantulas will have um, two, I believe maybe four spinnerets, and true spiders will have more than that, they'll have four, possibly six spinnerets, if I'm correct. And what that, what spinnerets are, are the little, I guess you could call them appendages that actually make the web and move the web when it comes out of their abdomen. They're like the sewing hands for the web. So that's another main difference between the tarantula and the true spider. And then next here, I'll show you the difference between the eyes, which is another key factor in the difference between a tarantula and a true spider. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about with the eyes. So with a tarantula, this spot right here that you can kind of see that circular spot right there, that is their eyes. Basically what tarantulas is, their eyes are more grouped together and they have poor eyesight than true spiders do. They use their mass and their body size to feel more than they will see. Now with Jacqueline, she has what are called telescopic eyes and she has more spread out eyes and her eyes are like lenses and they're different sizes. And then depending on what she needs to use them for, she can choose what lenses to see, to see either further, closer, mid-range, and be able to focus on more things better than a tarantula can. A tarantula really does not have great eyesight. They really can't see very far in front of them. And like I said, they use their body mass to feel the ground and feel any movement or any shuddering from any prey items or anything that may harm them. Okay guys, and here's what I was talking about with the true spider. So you can see this is a jumping spider and their eyes are more spread out. They're more wrapped around their head. Other spiders will have them more like parallel with their face and more up on their head instead of wrapping around. They can have different, you know, patterns to their eyes, but their eyes will be more spread out than the tarantulas will be. And then as you guys can see here, the eyes are different sizes. This one's like a medium. There'll probably be a smaller one back there. And then these are the bigger ones. And what you actually see a jumping spider under like a telescope, you can actually see inside that there's something moving inside their head that, it, that it's not, these are not just their eyes. It actually looks like something chooses, they're like their true eye chooses what lens to see out of. And that helps them see a lot better and a lot farther and that's why jumping spiders have some of the best eyesight out of any arachnid in the whole world so oh and i just wanted to show you guys real quick this is the book i'm using this is spiders of the world a natural history by norman platnick and I, I i love using this book it has a lot of detail on like like it says spiders of the world tarantulas true spiders um trapdoor spiders jumping spiders any any subspecies of spiders that you can think of, this book covers it, and it also tells you the different anatomy parts of a tarantula. So, really, that's about it. There, there is some differences, like I went over here, between a tarantula and a spider, but there are many similarities as well. Like, they have eight legs. They have pedipalps, which are the arms in front of them, as you guys can see here, just like that one does right there. And this tarantula does right here. The that spider and the tarantula, they both have pedipalps. They both have chalice array. They all have fangs. Um, they're just positioned differently. And they all have spinnerets. They just made 
have a different amount of spinnerets and the body size is different of course now sometimes you can get a true spider that is still hairy and as big as a tarantula like for instance a huntsman spider like you see that giant spider from australia that everybody sees online that's a true spider still but it is big as a tarantula if not bigger and it is pretty hairy but it's not as hairy as a tarantula but it is still classified as a true spider um, another thing is is that a lot of times true spiders are better at climbing than tarantulas it depends on the species of tarantula that you're comparing it to but a lot of tarantulas are more they need a wider range they're not gonna be able to like crawl up something that as smooth or as flat as necessarily like a true spider can because a lot of times tarantulas will actually have hooks in the little ends of their feet here and that's what really helps them grip and also their their feet do stick as well but other than that basically a spider is a spider a tarantula is a spider but a spider is not a tarantula it all depends on what you're looking at I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I know I've been gone for a while and I, I do apologize for that, but I am glad to be back. And um, I, will, I am happy to say that Cutie, my cat, is doing a lot better. She seems to be very healthy. She's just as sassy as ever, which is just her personality, which is fine. And everything's everything's all good. So thank you guys again for watching. I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. I I love reading all you guys' comments, and I, I, I like seeing the subscribers because then I know you guys are interested. And if you guys don't subscribe or like, I'm just happy to see that you guys enjoy the videos, and that's what matters most to me. It's not the subscribers. It's not the likes. It's not the views or anything. I just like sharing my passion with other people. So thank you guys again for watching. If you guys did enjoy it, please do like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.